Hello, Floriana Club. It's Brad again with another digitizing video for you. Um, I had a request from somebody in the YouTube comments section that I do uh, a video on uh, Fringe. So that's what we're going to do this month is Fringe. Um, Fringe is super, super easy to make, uh, but there's a couple of things you have to know, a couple settings you have to keep in mind. Um, otherwise, it doesn't come out so good. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to just start by creating a new design and uh, we're going to be working off a backdrop like normal. Um, so we go to the backdrop tools, this one with the little mountain scene here. And what you're going to want is just a simple clip art uh, image with um, a simple clip art image that would have you know something with hair in it. So I'm going to do this lion head. Um, you can do a Google search, find some artwork uh, that'll work for it. Um, uh, let's see, this image is enormous. I don't know where I got this from that it's so big. Uh, so we're going to change the size, go to my properties menu. I'm going to make this uh, it's about square, I'll make it about three inches wide. So type in three right here for inches and hit apply. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in so we can see what's going on. So uh, when you're doing fringe, um, there's a couple things that you have to keep in mind. Number one is that the fringe can't have other embroidery on top of it except for um, except for right along the edge to, to hold it down. So um, when I look at at, uh, at this lion head here, these ears that are in front on my graphic, that's not going to work. I can't embroider on top of my fringe because um, it would spoil the fringe effect. Um, so um, we're going to have to make it so that these, these ears sew out behind the fringe. Um, Number two, you also have to make sure that your fringe overlaps slightly with something in the middle. You can't just have fringe just kind of hanging out. Um, I, I couldn't have just like a, a, a fringe design. There's got to be something holding down the fringe on the inside of it. Um, and the way that fringe works, if you've never sewn out a fringe design, is you'll have a big fat satin stitch and then you cut the bobbin thread underneath and pull it up on the side that's not being held down by the fill. Um, it's really, really simple to do that, um, but you just have to keep in mind the, the things that you have to do. Um, and then um, the other things are you can't have any underlay um, underneath. That wouldn't make it very easy to cut your bobbin thread and pull the, the fringe up. Um, so no underlay, um, and also there's a setting for short stitches. I'm not going to get into what exactly that does, but you need to turn it off. Um, and everybody's digitizing software should have that. What do you got, Floriani or Masterworks or whatever. There'll, there'll be a way to turn that off, and I'll do that when I get to it. Um, but let's get a look at this design and, um, and start digitizing it. Um, so first, like I said, I can't have the, um, the ears on top of the fringe. Uh, that's not going to work. So we're going to actually have the ears be behind the fringe, and that's going to be the first thing that we digitize. But the thing about fringe is it's kind of loose, and, and it's, it's almost like it can be kind of see-through. You know, like you'll be able to move the hair, or the hair will move a little bit, and you'll see the ears behind it. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and, um, and look at these ears. I'm going to zoom in on... Uh, the left ear first. So looking at the ear, I think um, I think I'll do the inside, the pink part of the ear first, uh, and then I'll do the the yellow part on the outside. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna use my. Um, actually, you know what? I I had somebody ask me the other day why I never use the complex fill tool or the classic satin tool or um, any of these other tools up here at the top digitizing tools and this, it's honestly because I learned how to digitize using masterworks uh, which didn't have those options um, but let's fringe is such a quick simple thing I may as well roll some other stuff into it um, so uh, the complex fill stitch if I use this instead of using my line tool to draw artwork in so this is the way that I would normally show you to do this start clicking you know drawing my outline with the straight line tool and then close my shape and then uh, pick my color I guess and then hit the fill the standard fill down here and that works fine um, but a more direct way to do this um, and really I ought to be doing this really um, uh, I just like I said I, I learned how to do it in a program that doesn't have this um, is to use this complex fill stitch tool and what this does is it's basically the same thing it's just that's going to default to what would happen if I drew it and then clicked on the thing but there's one thing that's helpful um, that I'm going to show you here in a second so let me um, I'm going to left click on my complex fill tool and uh, I'm just going to start my design right here and um, of course remember you hold down the control key to curve your line so just like I did before with the line tool 
I'm going to come around in exactly the same manner, close my shape, but look at this. I just I hit the close shape and this little line just came up. And um, you may have figured out what this line is. That's my stitch direction. Okay, so I it automatically comes up and asks me what direction I want my stitches, which is convenient because I want them this direction, not that direction. So all you have to do is left click and drag to to move the line uh, and place your stitches where you want them to be. So this is where I want them to be. I'm gonna right click, right click again, and it generates my my um, my fill. So we'll put that in 3D so we can see it. There's my nice fill. Uh, of course, I forgot to set the color <laughs> before I started doing it, so let's do that. Uh, hit the select tool automatically selects my uh, last created object and I'm going to pick a color. This uh, cream yellow color will do nicely. Um, now um, we're going from here and we're going to go over to here. So what I want to do is I want to actually move so that there's not a big jump stitch. I want to actually move through the design okay, and get over to... Wait a minute. Did I make that cream yellow? Why did I do that? This is supposed to be pink. That's so silly. Anyway, so pink. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but so anyway, so I want to move to over here, but I don't want there to be a trim. I don't want it to cut here and then go over to here. I want it to flow from one thing to another. So let's take a look in our shape tool, which as we know, when we click on our shape tool, it shows us this green dot and this red dot, which is my start and my stop point. So I want uh, my start's fine, uh, but I'm going to move my stop to down here. And then I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to hit this Run Stitch button. Okay, it's right here. It's um, looks like a little swirly. I don't even know, like a snake with two heads. Anyway, you click on that, and then you click around where that um, that stop point was. And I'm going to go and just hide along here, and then run up to where I want my uh, my next fill area to start. I right click. So that just has a running stitch go from right here down to here that keeps there from being a jump or uh, a trim. Um, between these two things and that's going to be covered up by other stitches so we can get away with that anytime anytime you can you want to hide your movement um, in in a design like that so let's go back up we'll get our uh, complex fill stitch tool again and start clicking I'll hold down my control key to curve this line a bit okay get back to the end I'm gonna hit my close shape tool there we go. We get our inclination line back up, and we can just left click and drag to reposition that guy. There we go. Okay, so we right click, and now this actually see how this has a um, a red dot on the end. I this is actually letting me set where my stop is. So that's why my stop was up there because I actually I actually clicked up here in my last one. So um, we're just going to stop this, say right there, uh, we'll be fine. Um, and then we're going to pick up with this outer part here. And to do that, we are going to use the um, the classic satin stitch tool which is another tool that I've never really told you how to use before if you're only learning from watching my videos you'll be like what, are, what is this uh, but this is another way to draw a satin stitch in um, another other than the way that I would normally show you how to do it which is to use the line tool like this notice how I'm overlapping my fill a little bit by the way um, you want to make sure that your stitches overlap a bit when you're digitizing not too much, but you know, a bit. So here, this is my normal way that I would draw a satin stitch. Draw around the outline, okay, right click. We'll set the color here so I don't forget, cream yellow this time for real. And then I would use my satin tool and draw my inclinations in manually. This is the direction that the stitch is going to go, okay right click a couple times and there we go there we have a satin stitch put it in 3d we can see it, it looks nice and pretty okay that's the way and if, if that's the way you want to do it then by all means do it uh, but we're gonna um, we're gonna actually use the um, the tool up here the classic satin tool because I wanna I wanna um, you know spread around the, the different ways of doing stuff so the classic satin stitch tool works uh, as follows uh, let's see let me pick my color uh, and uh, so the way that it works is you you basically are putting the inclinations in as you as you click so I'm gonna start on this side and then I go to this side and that's my first inclination okay and then I go back up here and then back to where I want the stitch direction to go and back up here and go and up and down and now we don't see the fruit of our labor 
until we're done. So it it's not that intuitive, I think. I I don't know. Maybe it's because I never did it this way when I when I learned to digitize. I see other digitizers do this and it looks so natural for them. Okay, so we get to the end here. I right click to generate and you see it it does basically the same thing. And if we go in and um and and select this and use the shape tool and look at this, we can see that their inclinations are there. We can adjust them if we're not totally happy with the way that they ended up. Um and I am actually not totally happy with this. I think I didn't really end it far enough down, so I'm going to pull my finishing points down a little farther like that um, and probably want this end down a little bit farther too. That's what I get for going outside my comfort zone. Um, but anyway, um, so so you see, that's it's another way to put in a, a satin path. Um, so yeah, that's that's what that tool does. Um, like I said, I'm not really, I'm not totally sold on it. Figure I, I may as well show it to you though. Um, anyway, so now we want to do the same thing we did over here when we came down through here so that there would be no jump. We can do the same thing with this. So let's see where our start and our stops are. Open up the shape tool again. We're starting here. Let's start it here and stop it here and we'll travel back through the design in that same path. Why not? Uh, so we're going to uh, pick up the run stitch and we're just going to go boom, 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 travel through, back into here, okay, and we just move over a little bit, use the arrow keys to pan over here. We're going to do the same thing, put the satin stitch in over here. So let's see, we'll give it another try with the classic satin stitch. So we'll start it here and go over and then go back to this side and over back to this side and over, back to this side and over, and this is a stitch direction. Every single time I do this, it is putting in a stitch direction. And I'm actually, I'm not doing it, but if you hold down the control key, it actually will curve your line just like it does. Oh, you see, that actually works much better. That looks, that, yeah, that works much better if you actually curve your line when you do this. All right, right click. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Well, actually, <laughs> my my stitch direction's kind of wonky here. See how it's going going like this. But that's actually right when I first started uh using that um the control key to curve the line. Um anyway, really good work experimenting like this while I'm uh <laughs> while I'm uh teaching how to do something. I'm like, "Here, let me learn how to do something myself while I teach you guys how to do something." Uh, but anyway, um, so I just went back, used my shape tool, fixed my inclinations to uh, a way that I think looks a little better. Uh, there you go. Um, so we've got our um, our ears done. So the next step is actually going to be to put down the um, to put down the the fringe stitch. Okay. So there's a couple of things we wanna we wanna think about for this fringe stitch. Um, number one, a fringe stitch is really just a super super wide satin stitch. Okay. So we still have the restrictions of the way that satin stitches work. We cannot make our stitches too too long, or the machine's gonna refuse to do it. It's gonna think it's a jump, uh, and and refuse to sew it out. So you can't do like a super crazy wide satin or a super crazy amount of fringe. Um, like you're not gonna have like really Really, really super long hair um, like you're not gonna be digitizing a hippie or anything and have him have like hair you know down down uh, past his butt or anything like that it's just not gonna happen um, uh, but for for this line basically from here to here that's gonna be fine uh, and uh, let's go ahead and start doing it um, I'm gonna yeah, why not why not keep trying to use this classic satin stitch um, I'll do it both ways I'll, I'll, I'll start with this and then if the results I don't like them uh, we'll go around so basically we're gonna start here and go here and go here to here here to here here to here here to here just going around curving the line really is not that important with this because of the fact that we're going to be trimming this. You're not going to see the curvature at the end of this line at all. Remember, we're just going right over the ears. Then when I get back to this point, I'm just going to overlap myself a little tiny bit, right click and generate it. There we go. That looks pretty good. 
Okay, so it's the wrong color. We want to make this a darker color. Um, there we go to match the the artwork a little bit, and we might want to pull this out a little bit. It really it's not going to matter because we're going to trim that. Um, hmm. You know what I might I, I I want to do though is overlap this a little more. What I don't want to do is to be trying to trim it, you know, trim the bobbin thread and then accidentally trim this thread. So what we can do is use our shape tool and just put another point right there by double clicking and pull it out a little bit. Let's pull some of these points out and move my stitch inclination out of the way a little bit. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfectly even, although it would be nice if it was. Um, so let's um let me go ahead and do this the the other way that I that I do satin stitches um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna draw uh, with the line tool see this way I can kinda a little more easily control where the outer edges are you can do it either way you know like I, I'm just I was gonna give it the old college try to do it the with the classic satin stitch because somebody had asked me about it why I don't use that. So there's your answer why I don't use it because I don't know how to use it right. Um, all right, and close this shape. So what I've just done here is I drew an outer line and an inner line for my artwork. Um, so I've drawn the outer line for the outer part of his mane, and then this is the inner line. And what I'm going to do is select both of these in my sequence view here using the control key, and then I right click and combine them, which then allows me to apply a satin stitch to this shape. And I'm just going to do it like this, north, south, east, and west, just like I was digitizing an O. Right click, right click to generate that, and there we go. See, that looks a little prettier, I think, than than the one I was able to do before. Not because you know it's better to do it one way or the other, just because I'm more comfortable doing it this way. Um, so anyhow, uh, what we've got here is the stitch that's going to be our fringe. And what we're going to do is when we finish sewing this out, we're going to go under here. There's going to be a big strip of white thread underneath. Um, for the bobbin thread and you're going to take a, uh, uh, a seam ripper and cut that white thread and then you're going to take something and dig the outside edge of this out of the fabric and it's going to become a fringe. Um, basically you can leave the default density and settings and stuff for this except for one thing we do need to change actually two things we need to change uh, by default you're going to have a parallel underlay in here you need to turn that off you need no underlay Okay, there's got to be not a single bit of underlay at all. And then you want to go over here where this arrow key is and go all the way to the end where it says general. We're going to turn off short stitches. Now, short stitches, I'm not going to get into exactly what that is, but just trust me, you don't want it turned on. We hit apply. See how it regenerates a little bit. Now, this is ready to be fringe. Well, not completely ready to be fringe, actually, because we need to tack it down. We can't sew this out like this. It would just rip out um, because there wouldn't be anything holding it in from this side. So we, we need to do the fill stitch for this part of his face. And then we also, but before that, we should actually tack this down before the fill. We're going to tack it down with a bean stitch. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go in and before I do, uh, what I'm going to hide this eventually so that it doesn't distract me having this big puff of, of satin stitch around here. But before I do, what I want to do is use my line tool, or actually I could just use the, the run stitch tool here. So I'll do that. Use the run stitch tool, and then I want to draw just inside. I'm going to turn off 3D so I can see the stitch ends a little bit better. I want to go just inside the stitch points. So this is going to hold this down. And this is going to be covered up, so it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. I'm not even bothering to curve my line. Using my arrow keys to move around. Okay, coming up and around. Just make sure we catch all of this fringe. Okay. We right click to generate that and let's select it and change it from a single run to a bean. We don't need to change it to a, a more than three repeats bean or anything. We do want to have a fairly short stitch length, so I'm going to set that to two. Hit apply. Okay, put that in 3D. You can see that's that stitch runs over itself. And that's going to be the same color, so it's going to do the fringe and then run the bean stitch out on top of it. Okay. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my um 
I'm gonna hide my uh, my satin. Uh, oh, you know what? This was supposed to be a different color. I forgot. Hang on. Let's make this a different color. It's supposed to be. Uh, we'll make it like a clay brown. Uh, we'll make this one a clay brown too. Where was that? Clay brown. Okay. Um, so anyway, so now we want to hide this clay brown color. Um, oh, these guys now they're not. Uh, they're the same color, but they're 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 different. Um, uh, they've they've got it as separate color changes. So let's get rid of that. There's a button for that around here somewhere. Uh, color play. No, it's uh, oh, I forget. Color sort. There it is. Color sort. We click on color sort. Okay, it reduces one color. Now we've got that as one one piece. See how before? Let me undo it just so I make sure you see what I'm talking about. It's got this says clay brown, and then under that satin path. Now here it says clay brown, and under that's run. If I save this design like this, that's gonna stop after this, even though it's the same color. So that's why we hit this color sort button here. That sorts it out and puts it back in the right order. Although it didn't do it that time. We go select both of those and color sort. And there we go. So I didn't have them selected. Um, so anyway, they're they're back in the right order. So uh, now we're gonna do his face, and I want to hide this so that it does not distract me. Okay, and we're gonna do do the complex fill tool up here, and I'm gonna follow the outside edge of this black. So that I make sure I go over. Remember, you don't have to line up perfectly with your artwork. All right, pan back up here, curve it around, right click, and um, we'll have the stitch direction go this way, I think. And start and stop really don't matter that much for that. Uh, but we do want to make this that cream yellow color. And there we go. Okay, so let's turn off 3D so we can see through this. There we are. So we've got our yellow fill in there. And um, now we're basically we're down to the, um, the outline. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the outline. We're not going to outline the... the uh, the main obviously that's going to be French so we don't need to worry about this black line but I do want to put the black outline around around his uh, his head and um, and maybe want to do around his ears too because uh, they've got that black outline around them so uh, let's see how are we going to do this to minimize the amount of um, minimize the amount of jumps that we've got to deal with here uh, and trims rather I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this here, go around it like this, and I'm going to jump into. I'm going to have just a single line, just a single stitch from here to here. That's going to get lost in the rest of the fringe. Just a single stitch from here to here. And then go around this way. Oops, didn't mean to write. I'm just trying to figure. I'm just trying to think of this here, how I want to do it. And then I'll travel, jump up here, come around, jump down, travel back over here, and then finish it this way. Sorry, that was such a, a long pause there while I was trying to sort out my thoughts um, but um, I had to I had to kind of think about I had to visualize how I'm going to do this so uh, let's go ahead and, and, and get started here so I want to trace this part oh you know what there's a black underneath here too I hadn't really I'm going to ignore this I'm going to pretend that's not there I'm just going to go around like this and we're going to do it in a satin stitch uh, not as a uh, as a run stitch because I think it looks a little better and I'm going to make it a little wider than the artwork is just because I don't want oh forgot to curve my line uh, because I don't want to um, I don't want to have too skinny of a satin stitch okay and I'm doing this my 
the way that I like to do it. So, oop, got a weird bend in my curve there. Remember, just backspace to undo if you make a mistake. I'm still doing it. Coming around like that. We'll close him off here with the close shape tool. Um, let's see, we got to tell it it's going to be black. Then we're going to turn it into a satin stitch. And I'll put my stitch directions in. Inclinations, they call them, not stitch directions. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and hit the select tool, generate that. Um, okay, so let's see, where was my start and my stop? Uh, we started here, we stopped here, so we'll have the stop be here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a single stitch. Uh, I'm going to use the manual stitch. I'm going to go from right here to right here, where my start is going to be for this next segment. So I'm going to grab uh, my line tool again, and we're going to trace the outside of this. Because this is a closed in shape, I'm going to do it with a hole. And what I mean by that is I'm going to close this outer shape and then I'm going to go back and trace the inner line second and then combine them to make a single closed in shape. Okay, we'll close that. So we're going to take both of these, we're going to right click, combine, and then we're going to put our satin stitch inclinations in. More or less, we're going to do north, south, east, west. Let's see how that, oop, let's see how that comes out. Put it in 3D. Now, it kind of gets skinnier and fatter in here, but you get the idea. Not uh, trying to win any awards for um, best digitizing here. Just giving you the giving you the bare essentials here. Now, in here we we've got some spots where uh, there's going to be some unavoidable trims. Okay, so between here and here, that's too far. That's too far. That's too far. Nothing we can do about having trims on the inside of this thing. So it's just how it has to be. Um, but that. Oops. Didn't mean to move quite that far. That's why you should use the arrow keys uh, to pan around like this using the keyboard and not use these because it's easy to accidentally click like that and get way, way off of where you meant to be. So at any rate, I'm going to just go ahead and start digitizing his eyebrows here. Uh, I'll use the line tool, um, curve it like this, come around here, okay. Satin stitch. Put it in like that. Right click, and there we go. And then I'm going to go do his other eyebrow. Say, um, let's say we use the classic satin this time. Oh, <laughs> I started tracing it the wrong way though. Uh, how would I do the round end with this? You know what? I don't know. If anybody knows how you would do a rounded end on this, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll make a follow up video because. Honestly, I don't even know how I'd go about doing that. So I'm just going to do it the normal way. Normal for me. And those of us who grew up using Masterworks didn't have these fancy, well, I guess they're the opposite of fancy, these traditional digitizing tools. <laughs> All right, so satin stitch. Uh, there we go. All right, that looks nice. And then um, we got the eyeballs. You know what? I'm going to do those as a satin stitch too. Make them nice and reflective. Why not? Uh, so let's see. I'm going to I'm going to cheat using auto shape here. Whoop. Bring in this circle. Accidentally clicked in the wrong place. Okay. I'll stretch this out so it fits. And we'll just do a single inclination with this. Womp. Just like that. We'll do the same thing in the other eye. Actually, we'll we'll have the machine go from here to the nose. No reason for it to be going back and forth. Oh, what am I doing? I meant to use this button. 
and I'm just grabbing the wrong thing all day long. You just remember, you've got undo up here. You can undo all day long in this. And it's always best to make your selection from the sequence view, not by clicking in your design field. So do as I say, not as I do. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and put a single inclination in there. That's going to come out nice. And then uh, let's see. Grab this. Of course, I could just copy and paste my other one in here so it's the same size, but there we go. Satin stitch, inclination, just like that. All right, and then um, all that's left is his little uh, little smile here. So let's go ahead and trace this in. We could also, if we wanted to, we could use a magic wand for something like this. I mean, our artwork is simple enough that we could get away with using the magic wand to trace this. But I just, I just kind of feel dirty using the magic wand, to be honest with you. Oop! Should have let off the um, the curve tool there. You kind of have to let off the curve tool when you change directions. There we go. Satin stitch. There, there. There. See how that comes out. Good enough for me. Okay, so uh, the only thing we're missing are those little white parts in his eyes. So we'll just go ahead and throw some little circles on there. Make it white. Make it a fill. Why not? Copy and paste. Throw the other one over here. And oh, <laughs> I forgot. I totally forgot what I was going to do with my pathing. I was going to path this. Oh, it was going to be so smart. I was going to have this path go down, come up and around, and then I was going to stop the satin stitch here because I thought I was going to be real slick, but then. I got distracted and didn't do it. <laughs> well, I'm not going back and redoing this whole part of the video. Just imagine that I had pathed this in a really slick manner. No, I'm just kidding. Um, basically, what I wanted to do there is something like this. Um, all right, so we're going to have this. Let's delete this. So. For my outline, what I wanted to do was come around here and then I got to turn off 3D so I can see it. I wanted to come out like this, start right here. So this is my start point. And then curve around like this. You know, looking at this, I really, I see where using that classic satin tool would be useful right here. okay though I'm gonna do it this way because I'm stubborn so when you make a mistake like this you just gotta make sure that you go and insert this back into the right part in the sequence okay uh, after you're done fixing everything that you broke there we go and this was gonna be black and you gotta make it satin so we're gonna go like this like this like this like this like this, like this, like this. Okay. So we've got our satin stitch coming around here. Let's check it. Looks okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump from here up to here using a manual stitch. Oh, we got to make sure our start and our stop are in the right place, though. Starts there, stops there. Okay. So pretty much in the right place already. I'm going to take a manual stitch from here to here. All right, and that's just going to get lost in the mess of um, lost in the mess of the um, what you call it fringe. Let's go in there. We're going to draw our outline around this ear. I'm being awful sloppy here, folks. But that's okay. This is just kind of just give you an idea of how the fringe works so this part of it is really not as important 
I mean, the important part of, of learning how to do fringe was like the three seconds that I told you uh, not to have any underlay and to turn off the short stitches <laughs> and to make sure you have something tacking it down. That was the important part of that. But anyway, uh, we're, we're having a pathing lesson here. So uh, we go down here, we come around, we start here. So we got to make sure that my start point is about there. My stop point needs to be about there. And now we're going to go and take the manual stitch and come down one stitch in there. And then I want to go and I'm just going to travel around to here and I'm going to go from here back with my satin stitch so go back in here and we're going to look for my end which is right there all right I'm going to turn back off the 3d All right, this is going to link up with this right here. Okay. Then satin. There, 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 there. Put the whole thing in 3D. And that's it. You bring this back and we'll be able to see the rest of it. Uh, oh, and of course, I didn't listen to what I just told you to do, and I didn't put the stuff back in the sequence it needs to be in, so let's do that. Um, turn him back off. So when you make a mistake, you got to make sure you go back and fix your sequence, right? So this is what sews out after this. All right, now everybody's back in sequence that they're that they're supposed to be in. And we may as well take this whole black area and do a color sort so that it all gets sorted back out. And we just have, if we look in our sequence view, our whole sequence looks nice and pretty. Okay. Oh, apparently not. Well, how is my, oh, right, that's why. All right, so what we're going to have to do, uh, I totally forgot about the, <sighs> yep, 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 I'm dumb. Well, I, I hope everybody can see what I did. <laughs> this is what I get for digitizing on the fly. And not like practice in first. Um, okay, so I wasn't thinking, and I I did what you're not supposed to do, which is I have stitches on top of the fringe. That's not going to work. Um, so basically, we need to just either move these two satin paths back, and then we've got an extra run. We've got uh, if we take these, then we've got an extra black. Um, so if we take these and move them back, so that they sew out right after that and before this, and we also need to take out those traveling stitches that I had put in there that are unnecessary and we would need to redo that satin path so this is all one complete piece again um, or we could have um, we could have just taken out that those black um, satin paths altogether man this is a mess but you know what it's for free on the internet so you get what you pay for right anyway I hope this taught you how to do fringe <laughs> thanks for watching see you in the next video